In lecture question 5 of partial derivation, we consider a function g of three variables x, y, and z. And in this case, we also say that x and y are also functions of z. And what we want is a total derivative dg uh, by dz. So we need to take to calculate the derivative of g according to z, taking into account the fact that both x and y are also functions of, of z. So we will have eventually to uh, include the derivative of x according to z and the derivative of y according to z. So first, just um, consider the part of g which is just a function of z. So that's uh, if we don't take into account for the moment the fact that x and y are function of z, that's just the partial derivative of g according to z. So we have this term. But now we need to consider the fact that um, there is also a dependence of z uh, in x and a dependence of z in y. So the dependence of uh, z in x um, is encoded in the partial derivative, um, sorry, in the total derivative dx over dz. Um, but we need to know how g varies with x and that's encoded in by the partial derivative dg over dx. And of course we have the same term for y. So we take an example of that in uh, lecture question 6 where we have g of x, y and t and we which is expressed as and we also say that y itself is a function of t, it's a cosine. And, uh, but x is not a function of t. So if we just apply what we did in lecture question 5 but replacing z by t, uh, we can directly uh, express dg over dt. So the first term uh, will be the partial derivative of g according to t, in this case it's minus 3. The second term uh, in our case is 0 because um, uh, x doesn't depend on, on t. So the third term we have to uh, calculate the partial derivative of g according to y. So that's uh, only uh, we 1 in this case. Um, and we multiply by the derivative of y according to uh, time, which will be uh, minus sine t. Uh, 